many of you remember back to driver's ed training? Remember when they would tell you, as you're driving down the highway, especially at night, don't look into the headlights of the oncoming car. Why do you think they told you that? Well, it's not real complicated. It's because if you're staring at the headlights of the oncoming car, our mind, our bodies, they work together on a subconscious level that many people completely ignore. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. It's really common that people will stare at oncoming headlights or a turn signal or whatever it is that's in their peripheral vision while they're driving their car. It might be their cell phone. It might be their stereo. It might be something distracting inside the car. And what happens when we do that is we tend to go to the place of our focus. So if you're staring at the headlights of an oncoming car, your car will tend to drift toward those headlights until you have impact. If you're staring off into the pasture at the cows, you may find yourself running off the road because we tend to go the direction of our focus. Now let that sink in for a moment as you think about How you sit down at the beginning of the year and you map out your plan, your sales strategy, your marketing strategy, your new customer acquisition strategy, your new detailed plan of the books that you're going to write, the things you're going to accomplish between the beginning of the year and the end of the year. And then somewhere through the course of the year, you get a little bit off target. You get a little bit off course. You, You realize that all of these goals and strategies that we laid out at the beginning of the year, all of the ones that made perfectly good sense. We looked at them in January and we said, if I can just accomplish this, man, all of the finances will be in the right place. All of our team will have the right training. All of our customers will be perfectly happy with what we're doing. We'll have the even flow of outputting new products and services for them. Everything's going to be awesome. And then somewhere around July, you look back and go, oh boy. We had this death in the family and then we had this employee who took a maternity leave and we had this employee that we found out was stealing and we had to let them go. And then we had this problem and that problem and this drama and that drama. And the reality of life is that we have to cope with all of those things. We have to cope with a, a, an employee who leaves and we have to retrain someone else to do their job. We have to cope with a death in the family and the emotional drain that it, that it has on us, whether it's us as the leader or someone on our team. We have to cope with changes in economics. I remember hearing a story one time of a guy whose primary business was those faxes that would come overnight. I don't know how many of you remember fax machines, but there used to be a machine that looked like a copier with a telephone attached to it. And from my office, I could send you a piece of paper and it actually spit out a piece of paper on the other side. It would engage your printer and engage its receiving factor and just spit the paper out. This guy made millions of dollars sending fax, fax uh, advertisements to other people's fax machines. And with a single stroke of a pen, an executive order said, basically, this is spam. Stop doing it. And made it against the law to send a fax that was not requested. Instantly, this guy's multi-billion, multi-million dollar business dried up. He was broke. Think about your business and how it would be impacted with something like that. What if you're only focused on the politics or you're only focused on the drama or you're only focused on family? What if you're not focused on multiple streams of income or multiple ways of doing business? If you're not focused on those things, they're not going to happen. As the leader, though, you have to discern what are the most important things that I'm going to focus on. What, What are the things that get my attention like that blinking red light that I have to stay focused on until we achieve our goals? And then what are those little blinking lights around that are like so many Christmas lights that if I keep staring at the blinking lights, I'll be yelling squirrel all day and I'll be getting nothing done. Of course, there are going to be problems. Of course, there will be drama. Of course, there will be challenges and issues and things that will blindside you. But the reality is, as the leader, you're responsible for determining what is it we need to focus on and then driving the focus of your organization in that direction. No one can do it like you, and no one will do it like you. You're the leader. Set the focus. Draw everyone's attention. And if you're asking yourself the question, what should I be focused on? 
might be time to get an executive or business coach, depending on the table of your business. Send me a private message. I can connect you with several in different industries, depending on what your expertise is. I am Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast for Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day.